Right, so do you remember when I said that forces were a vector quantity? Yeah, a vector quantity being a quantity with a magnitude and a direction. This block has got two forces acting on it. Okay, this one, the one on the right, has a magnitude of 10 newtons and is acting to the right. Yeah, magnitude of 10 newtons in the direction to the right. This force has a magnitude of 5 newtons and is acting to the left. Okay, so we've got a magnitude and a direction. Now, when we find something called a resultant force, we need to find one force that summarizes both of those forces. Yeah, so we need to find a force that does exactly the same thing as a 10 newton force to the right and a 5 newton force to the left. And the way we do it is we add together the forces. Adding together vectors is not the same as adding together scalars. Yeah, it's not quite as simple as that. Yeah, if I take this 5 newton arrow here and I redraw it at the tip of this arrow then I can pr you can probably see where the resultant force is going to be it's going to start at the very start of the first arrow and end at the end of the last arrow yeah so this is 5 newtons this is going to give us a 5 newton force here to the right yeah so I'm adding together two vectors there to give me uh, a vector as and this is my resultant force okay if I want to find the resultant force of two forces acting in opposite directions, I simply have to subtract them. Yeah? So this has a resultant force of 5 newtons to the right. Yeah? So you subtract you subtract for forces acting in opposite directions. Well, you can probably guess then, forces acting in the same direction, if I move the 15 newton arrow here to the end of the 20 newton arrow, then I'm going to end up with a resultant force like that. Okay, that's going to be a 35. That's not 20 there. That's 15. My mistake. Uh, we're going to end up with a 35 newton arrow to the right. A big, big resultant force to the right. So if they're acting in the same direction, you have to add them. Yeah? So you add them if they're acting in the same direction. Now, this one is a little bit more complicated. In this case... I have to add together the two that are acting in the same direction, so 2 plus 6 gives me 8 newtons, and then I subtract the one that's acting in the opposite direction, 8 newtons. I get a resultant force of 0 newtons. This is an interesting case, okay, because these forces are balanced. Yeah, a better way of saying the forces are balanced is to say they are in equilibrium. The forces are in equilibrium. Okay, they are in equilibrium. So when when forces acting on an object are in equilibrium, then the forces are balanced. There is no resultant force. Okay. Now, let's let's let's, let's go to this more slightly more complicated example. Now, the forces in this one are acting at right angles to each other. So it's a little bit more complicated, but actually this particular case is pretty simple. You can see that the two 7 newton arrows acting in opposite direction, they are in equilibrium with each other. So they're going to cancel out. We're going to end up with 0 newtons to the left and the right. So we can ignore those entirely. And we're just left with a 5 newton arrow up and a 20 newton force down. So we end up with a resultant force of 15 newtons down, yeah, because they're in opposite directions, so you have to subtract 20 minus 5 gives you 15. Right, one other thing we need to talk about. Now, forces, according to Isaac Newton, resultant forces cause an object to change its velocity specifically. We're going to look in that in more detail when we look at his Newton's laws. Um, but you just need to know that if a resultant force acts on an object, it will accelerate in the direction of that resultant force. That means it will get faster in the direction of the resultant force. So these two forces, these two are going to cause acceleration. Okay, because there is a non-zero resultant force here. In this case here, there is going to be no acceleration. Now that doesn't necessarily mean the object is stationary. Uh, the object doesn't have to be stationary to experience no acceleration. It just means it's not going to change its velocity. 
Okay, so we're going to say, instead of saying stationary, we're going to say constant. That means not changing velocity. Okay, so these, this particular object, the one in equilibrium, the one experiencing no resultant force, is going to experience no acceleration. It's, you can describe its motion as constant velocity. Uh, and at the top here, you can describe the motion of those two as accelerating. Yeah, In both cases, they accelerate to the right because that's the direction of the resultant force. Okay, In this case, it's accelerating because we have a resultant force and it's accelerating down yeah, in the direction of the resultant force. Right. Right, have a go then at these follow-up questions. So in all cases, you need to calculate the resultant force and then describe the motion. By that I mean, is it accelerating or is it remaining at a constant speed? Have a go at those. The answers will be in the description. See you in the next video.